Hey everybody, it's Triple L, and today let's talk My Hero Academia. Uh, this video, it's coming out as a type of response to some of the comments that I saw in uh, the comment boxes for the Caminati video. It's a response to the idea that there might actually not be a traitor. Uh, this was interesting because the comments popped up more than I thought. On the screen there's three, but I think there were a few more. And it's just an interesting idea. What we're gonna do with this video, uh, it's just gonna be like a really quick, simple discussion. Uh, me just pointing out a few things. And then I'm, I'm really interested to see what you guys think down below. Just to highlight one of the three comments that are on there, the one by Starly Shine. Anyone else think about how terrible it should be if after all the speculation there was actually no real traitor? About how after everyone came up with all these hopes and theories and no traitor really being at UA? I thought this was a pretty good comment to capture the, the general sense of what this uh, discussion is going to be. So let's just get into it. Could there actually not be a traitor? Well, yeah, duh, it's a world of superpowers. There could very easily be a villain whose quirk is to know where a person is at all times after touching them once. That's totally within the ballpark of expectations. Already with that thought, we have an opportunity, an avenue for which this could be justified, for which we could have scenarios where there seems to be a traitor uh, get explained away by just an overpowered quirk. All that I really want to start off with is that the possibility that there could not be a traitor, it could happen. Uh, but before continuing on that line of thought, let's acknowledge what would make a good traitor story-wise. If there is a traitor, the traitor has to be someone who can be justified given a few extra pieces of the traitor puzzle. Uh, it has to be someone who has been around enough for readers to care even a little bit about them. And it has to be someone who being exposed affects some of the characters profoundly. If we were to move away from the idea of there being a traitor, you lose some opportunities here, right? You lose the opportunity for this excellent reveal. You lose the opportunity for the piecing together of the puzzle. You lose the opportunity for the, oh, that makes sense after you're given one extra detail. You lose the opportunity from seeing how character would react if one of their close friends or acquaintances turned out to be a double agent. Taking the traitor off the table, that's what we stand to lose out on. But if there actually isn't a traitor, then what do we get in exchange? What's the narrative that justifies this one? That would still give you some kind of emotional reaction. We know that the traitor theories are alive and well in the community. Uh, people are invested. Starly Shine touched on it. People are invested. It's it'd be disappointing for them if there were no traitor. And we could kind of see a similar wasted investment type reaction from the manga. Anime onlys, let's assume that eventually there would be characters who started to get suspicious and started believing there was a traitor in their ranks. Again, assuming there is actually none. Well, this could be made to work with the villains very easily, right? The Villain Alliance is about destabilizing the current hero society. It'd be a pretty nice victory for them if they made the situation escalate to a point that UA is having trust issues and then they come in and deliver a critical hit using their lack of trust in each other as the foundation for why they were able to hit them that hard. See, in this situation, that feeling of stupidity that fans would have for feeling there was a traitor would also be mirrored for the characters, which I think is a pretty solid victory for the narrative. That's a feeling that reader and character get to experience together. That's cool. If there were no traitor, I do think that's how things could be spun to salvage the investment and still give us a kick-ass narrative. So in this version of events, people getting riled up and maybe the author making it look like there was a traitor, I think is still worthwhile. Remember, the story's goal is to make us feel things. If it needs to pull dirty tricks to do that, well, we'll see how well they work. Now though, we're going to move into spoilers because we really can't talk about this topic fully without diving into them. So anyone that wants to sign now, leave now. Okay, so guys, we know that in story, our suspicions are echoed by the teachers after certain events. But what if they are just that? What is the author doing to make us believe these suspicions are well grounded? I mean, we could still have a situation where there is no traitor and this whole discord between the heroes is exactly what the villains or the mastermind wants. That could be the case, but 
readers are still being strongly biased towards there being an actual traitor, and that is because of Ned Zhu. See, before Ned Zhu made his move in the story, you could have been free of traitor theories and never have even considered it. Maybe the villains just had their own means, people weren't really being told to look for a traitor by that narrative at this point, but once Ned Zhu moved in response to the possibility of a traitor, it validated the theories to some degree. The interesting thing with Ned Zhu is that he commands a certain degree of appreciation from readers. He is one of the smartest beings in My Hero Academia, heck his quirk allows for the fact that he is hyper intelligent. It creates the rationale. If the smartest guy in the room thinks that there is a traitor within their ranks, there most likely is a traitor. There is some degree of trust built between the reader and this character because of what the narrative is telling us. Even if you believe that Ned Zhu is the traitor himself, you're doing so because you trust what the narrative told you about his backstory, how he was abused at the hands of humans. So keeping that in mind, do we question Ned Zhu's brain power? Some of you might, but the vast majority probably won't. He probably is smart enough to sniff out the traitor. Now this may be a double-edged sword. For readers who agree with Ned Zhu, what we're doing is pretty much putting our faith in the story established authority. As readers, we have less reason to doubt Ned Zhu's capabilities, unless of course you think he is a traitor because of his capabilities. But anyway, with Ned Zhu, if you are on the side of there being a traitor, he is an ally, he validates the conspiracy theory. For those that think there is no traitor, a Ned Zhu is pretty much like a red herring. We put our faith in the word of a reputable authority figure and now we are open for a surprise. Even if you as a reader say you haven't done this, we can be certain that under this scenario that there is actually no traitor, the other characters who trust Ned Zhu have placed their faith in his plans and if it comes out that there was no traitor, well, everyone will just have to realize like, wow, they got him. And the effect we had at the beginning half, that of uh, the characters mirroring this disappointment with readers, would still play out. All that Ned Su has really done is justified the conspiracy theories. So in conclusion, is it possible there is no traitor? Uh, yeah, totally possible. Superpowers, man. Uh, likelihood though, you have one of the smartest guys preparing for that possibility, it really comes back to whether or not you want to place your faith in that character. Because Trader Theories aside, his thought process after the event is the most solid indication of there being a traitor. And he is the one who is most likely going to allow for the traitor to be identified. So do you want to be on the side of the guy who has the cred? On the other hand, if there is no traitor, He's the one who's going to come up empty handed and look pretty silly at the hands of the villains. That said, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. It's pretty much just uh, the idea of there not being a traitor is interesting. And when it came to the idea of whether or not this would be a wasted investment, whether or not readers would feel cheated, what I really wanted to show is that there is still a nice avenue, an opportunity for the manga to st or the story to still give us a satisfying emotional conclusion to that whole little plot thread in My Hero Academia. Um, again, it was really interesting to see those comments pop up. Um, I never really considered the possibility that there isn't a traitor. So that was really neat. Uh, there were other interesting comments that were also popping up, such as the idea that Toga is the traitor. Um, that's interesting. I don't think that's possible given what we know about her. If you guys want a quick video just kind of detailing my rationale and why I think that's not working at this stage of the game, uh, let me know down below. There was also variation thinking that uh, the trader isn't a student. I think that's actually very reasonable. There is a whole lot of things that we have to kind of ask if there is a student trader. If you guys would like a video on that rationale, uh, let me know down below as well. And uh, finally, a lot of people were also mentioning that the trader could just be one of the class 1B students. Um, that is just a nice compromise between the idea of uh, the trader isn't a student and the trader isn't in class 1A. It's a, it's a compromise between those two extremes. So very interesting little things. Anyway guys, uh, let me know what you want to hear more about. Uh, we will still be making the other trader theories. I know Ochako is going to be coming up relatively soon, just working on it. But uh, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Till next time, I hope you have a great day.
Oh, also, we have a Discord with other fans of other shows and My Hero Academia. If you want to join up on the Discord, uh, I'll leave a link down below in the description and maybe in a comment.